I've been using the M2 MacBook Air for about nine months now, and I think it's the perfect laptop for most people. But is it still worth getting it now, or should you wait for M3? And also, what about the 14-inch MacBook Pro and competition on the Windows side? I personally feel like this laptop should definitely be among the top contenders for your next laptop, since in the last nine months that I've spent with it, there has been very little disappointments and mostly pleasant surprises. Mine has physically held up pretty well. I haven't dropped it or anything, Thing, but I do bring it around in a backpack pretty often and I don't use a sleeve or a case. It's still pretty much in pristine condition. There's no visible scratches or dents anywhere. I also love how thin and light this laptop is. Even though it's a lot thinner than the MacBook Pros, it feels just as solid to work on this thing on a desk, on my lap. And compared to the 14 inch, I would say this one really doesn't feel any smaller. There's actually only an 0.6 inch difference diagonally between those screens. But personally, I don't really like how both of the Thunderbolt ports on the M2 MacBook Air are on the same side. Sometimes it makes charging this thing a bit awkward since I have to wrap the cable around it. And also it being able to only drive one monitor is a pretty notable downside versus the MacBook Pros. Now I have seen some online posts about the bottom plate bending, but I haven't noticed this issue myself. The bottom of this is still perfectly fine and it feels very solid. And the keyboard deck on this thing might flex ever so slightly more than the MacBook Pros, but honestly, it's so slight that you barely feel it even with the side-by-side -side. and I think it makes no difference in day-to-day -day use. The keyboard still feels really good. Compared to other Windows laptops that I've played with, this is probably the most rigid and solid feeling laptop. The hinge also didn't loosen over time. It's still great, holds the screen in all sorts of angles. The only other aspect that one might consider to be behind its competition is the display because it's becoming more and more common for Windows laptops to have OLED and 120Hz and so this regular LCD display might not seem that competitive, at least on paper. However, there are actually many situations where I prefer this display. This screen can go much brighter than most OLED ones out there, and on top of that, the MacBook anti-reflection coating is just much better than the other Windows ones that I've seen. And so in the end, this combination actually makes it a very usable laptop outdoors, which is definitely a plus. And I feel like the 500 nits on the M2 MacBook Air is a pretty notable upgrade over the 400 nits screen on the M1 MacBook Air. Surprisingly, I had a very hard time telling apart this display versus the mini LED display on the MacBook Pro. Now, of course, if you're under low ambient light conditions and watching some HDR OLED showreels or just HDR content in general, then it's very obvious that the mini LED delivers purer blacks and also much brighter highlights. But if you're just playing some regular videos like mine and you're in a moderately lit room, then I think you'll have a very hard time telling them apart. And given how rare HDR content is currently, you're really not missing out on much with this LCD display. And another benefit of an Apple display is that it's quite consistent with all other Apple displays in color and tone, whereas each window OLED seems to have like a personality of its own. But I do feel like I'm kind of missing out on the 120 Hertz. When 60 and 120 Hertz are side by side, I feel like it's pretty easy to notice. Even things like just moving the cursor around feels smoother on the 120 Hertz display. But when I'm just using the MacBook Air on its own, it feels perfectly fine. I don't don't really think about how it can be smoother. Now, the elephant in the room about the display is the notch. I've definitely seen some comments hating on it, but honestly, it's never bothered me much, either aesthetically or functionally. There's still plenty of room in the menu bar for items. I have quite a few installed. And even if you hate the look of it, you can hide it pretty easily with this app called Top Notch. It basically just turns the top part black, so the top bezel is just much thicker, but you're not wasting any space because the menu bar does sit on top of it. Even though the display is not mini LED, with Top Notch on, it still gets dark enough such that the notch no longer stands out. The notch at least somewhat justifies its existence with some pretty good 1080p webcams. And since there's already a notch, I think adding Face ID would be pretty cool too. But to be fair, I don't think the notch is the best solution because there are many other Windows laptops that will jam both the webcam and the Face ID into a much thinner bezel. But besides that, subjectively, I'm a big fan of this design. I love this new shape over the wedge and the thick bezels on the M1 Air. But more objectively, you know, the slight reduction in the weight and the small increase in screen real estate, the slight reduction in thickness doesn't set it significantly apart from the last gen in terms of the physical design. However, MagSafe is actually pretty notable and not just for the safety aspect of it, but also 
in that it now allows for fast charge at up to 67 watts, which has definitely come in handy for me a few times. And one last thing about the design is the hidden speakers. So without a direct speaker grill, it does sound worse than the MacBook Pros and the M1 MacBook Air from my memory. But honestly, in my nine months of use, I rarely use these speakers. Most of the time when I am using the speakers, I'm watching lectures at home. And for those times, it's perfectly intelligible. But the removal of the grills does make it slightly easier to clean. And I also think it looks cleaner overall. So I feel like I'm more okay with their removal now, but that's just my opinion. Battery life of this computer is another aspect that I really came to appreciate. I'd also appreciate it if you subscribed. First of all, after nine months of use, I didn't notice any meaningful battery life degradation. And actually just a few days ago, I did a full drain test of it looping 4K YouTube videos and it lasted over 10 hours. This is the longest lasting laptop of the size that I've ever used. There's a pretty big gap between it and the Windows laptops. When I'm not trying to do heavy tasks on this thing, like editing a video, it frequently lasts well over a day if I'm not like spending the entire day on it. And most of the time I don't bring a charger around because I'm pretty confident that it will last through the entire day. But it definitely does drain significantly faster if I'm doing something heavy like editing a video on it. In general, the M2 SoC doesn't drain that much power. Typically when I have a bunch of tabs open and I'm playing a 4K video, it's only only using about six to seven watts. And when I'm doing a heavier task, like rendering a video, it only draws around 20 watts. So even if battery life is a big concern for your day-to-day -day use, even a medium-sized battery bank can quite significantly increase the total runtime. And as for the performance, so I have the absolute base model here with eight GPU cores and only eight gigs of RAM but it still pleasantly surprised me with just how capable this thing is. With lighter tasks like web browsing, some text document work, it does not seem to run into any performance limits ever. And for a more extreme workload, here I have it connected to an external 5K display with over 20 tabs loaded and a 4K video playing. It still feels extremely smooth when I'm navigating around. There's no hiccups when I scrub through the video. It basically feels just as responsive as if there's nothing running on it. But at this point, it's using some swap, which couldn't be good for the longevity of the SSD. So unless you don't really multitask, I would still recommend upgrading to 16 gigs of RAM, but I would not recommend the GPU upgrade. I have more detailed testing in my review video here, but the gist is that as a fanless device, it's just not going to be a GPU workhorse. If you're thinking about getting a new MacBook to render faster or just do other more GPU intensive things, then the MacBook Pros are still going to be much better options. Also, the SSD in the base model M2 Air is slower, but that's never been an issue in my use. All right, and speaking of editing, so with only eight gigs of RAM, it begins to slow down pretty noticeably if you have many tabs opened and you're trying to edit at the same time. But if you're just editing, then the performance is actually pretty decent. You can cut up 4K clips just fine, move them around. When you go to render it, it does thermal throttle, so it becomes a bit slow. But if you're just editing occasionally, I wouldn't really go for the 13-inch MacBook Pro to save on those couple of minutes. However, there are a lot of features in editing that this thing is just way too underpowered to do, like denoising, stabilizing long clips, tracking a subject. So it's not quite enough for more complicated edits. Overall, as a thin and light device, this is really great but it's also up against some pretty stiff competition. Notably, Apple still sells the M1 MacBook Air on its website for $200 less. Considering that it feels about as fast for common and light tasks and also lasts just as long, it's quite compelling in value. But this M2 MacBook Air does bring a better webcam, also a brighter display and a MagSafe port. I think if you're not editing a video on this thing or a software engineer that needs every bit of performance possible, then whichever one you choose is going to be with you for a a really long time. So it might be worth it to spend a bit more to get the newer and more updated design and also the creature comforts. And the same logic applies to the future M3 MacBook Air as well. Even if the M3 chip is going to be 20% faster, I doubt the average user is going to feel it when they're just browsing the web and working on text documents. And on the design side, 
First of all, I think it's extremely unlikely that they're going to put out a new design on a computer that they just redesigned. And I mean, what more could you ask for the design anyways? A mini LED 120Hz display would certainly be nice, but I think that's reserved for the Pro lineup. So the MacBook Air might never get that. So I think there's nothing that special to wait for, but let me know what you guys think. That's going to be it for this video. Subscribe if you enjoyed. You can also check out my Instagram and TikTok and you can watch more here.